when, when we were a ball of cells, I mentioned this part already, this, the, the cells that were on the outside are going to make a, are going to become the container. In other words, a space begins to appear in this ball of like cells. Space begins to appear, and those that are on the periphery are going to maintain the periphery, the, the globe. And those that were in the center are going to move to the periphery as a glunk of cells, a mass of cells. But meanwhile, they're absorbing cells that are disappearing. That energy is getting absorbed into those that are on the surface, the, not surface, but the perimeter, the circumference. And those that are the masses are going to be absorbing the energy of those that are disappearing and creating the space. Is that okay? So when we were uh, <laughs> blastocysts, and then, so here's the the globe, and here's the massive self, and it's it's gone against the wall. If, if there's a big space like this big room, we move against the wall. It's just a way of going toward where there's a boundary. So, say there's this big room, and we all would come against this wall. And those of us who are against the wall have one perception. Those who are facing the open space have another perception. So, by the way, that's called the ones on the outside are called the trophoblasts, and <clears throat> they're forming the perimeter of the room, would be the trophoblasts. And then the, the ones that are the group of cells are called the embryoblasts because they're going to become the embryo. So we're all here against the wall as the embryoblasts, and the walls are the trophoblasts, and this is the trophoblast cavity. Is that kind of clear? You already know this because you have done it. But so now we're kind of like floating through the universe, going through the um, fallopian uterine tubes, and we come to the uterus, which is another cavity. So we have a cavity with inside of an outside stream. And let's say, now we have to switch the image a little bit. Um, so now this is the trophoblast cavity and the embryoblast. And the embryoblast is here. And do that in front of yourself so that I'm not the only one having fun here. <laughs> So you have your trophoblast cavity, and then put your embryoblast out here. But this, so this is the space. So the back of the embryoblast is along the wall of the trophoblast, and the trophoblast is whirling, and it would be spiraling just like the water down the toilet. It is floating down. <laughs> and but to your back, this is my back, this is where you touch the uterine wall, okay? And what happens is this mass of cells, the embryoblast, crawls along the wall of the trophoblast and attaches to the place of attachment to the uterine wall. Does it actually attach or does it sink into? I saw like a video last night and it seemed like the the thing sunk into the tissue of the It actually will disappear. You will you will not only attach to the wall, you will totally be absorbed into the wall of the uterus. And then the wall the, the wall of the uterus will expand out to create the cavity. So you So we don't actually attach and this is the opening. We go into the wall and then we open the wall and the wall closes. I, there's a, I did it. Anyway, that's a whole other thing. We sink in to the wall of the uterus. Totally, and then there's like a little spot there that they can see where the embryo went into the wall of the uterus. So what I'd like to, again, just uh, say, repeat, is how the embryoblast crawls along the wall 
and goes to the spot of the trophoblast cavity that's touching the uterine wall. So now, if you put, if you will please, put your hand, at least one hand, on your leg. Just put your hand <laughs> on your leg and do nothing. Then feel how the cells of your hand migrate to the place of contact and how the cells of your leg migrate to the, don't do anything with your other hand, migrate to the place of contact. Now, put your other hand down, but don't do anything. <laughs> Does it feel a little bit schizophrenic? Like you've got a connection somewhere, another place you don't have a connection? I don't even know what I'm talking about, because we're just two minds. Because I don't see that as a disease, by the way. Then let the cells of your other hand migrate to the place of contact and the place of your leg migrate to the place of contact. So whenever you want to make contact, there's a migration of cells to that place of contact. What if it's a thought? What if it's an emotion? And then what if you want to take your hands away? Have you ever had someone have their hands on you and take it away and it feels like a kind of a shock? Maybe you've made contact and they haven't, or they made contact and you did it, and whatever. There's a difference. So when you take your hands away, let your cells move away from the place of contact. So we say to someone, we have about 10 more minutes, and then let's transition. It's a time to move your cells away until your hands are released. Or you're released from the contact. Or uh, and sometimes leaving in the morning with our little, that little, like, little granddaughter, I'll ask um, Len to come and help in the transition so she can transfer her, her wanting to go with us to knowing that she's at home and they're going to go out later. She's not just being um, deserted in some way. Then when is something happening that you realize, I don't want to make contact. You don't have to. You can maintain a space. It doesn't mean you're not present. You're just not moving to that contact. What if somebody close to you irritates you? They have this pattern, you just know they're gonna do it again because they always do it, right? And the next time you just go, I'm not gonna attach to the irritation of that. I'm gonna let them do their thing. I don't have to attach to it. Why am I attaching to that? It always irritates me. Why don't I just witness it? That's really cool. It doesn't mean you disattach from the person, but from the behavior that irritates you. And they may be doing it to irritate you, but probably it's just a pattern. And if they're doing it to irritate you, they're going to be awfully disappointed, and they might do it more. And you have another opportunity to go, wow, <laughs> more, go ahead, do it, do it, do it. Come on, more, 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 more. Come on, come on, come on. <laughs> 